Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is largest rectangular sum matrix whose sum is 0 and it is a hard level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given a matrix of dimensions n cross m and we have to find the largest rectangular sum matrix by area whose sum is 0. Right. Now uh, they have given a certain conditions uh, in case if our area is the same for multiple sum matrices whose sum is 0 then in that particular case we will have to return the one with the minimum column index and then again if it is same we have to return the one with the minimum row index. Right. These are certain conditions but uh, at the end you will realize that uh, we will not have to worry about these particular conditions specifically because of the way we implement the problem. Right. Now whenever we see these types of problems whose area is 0 or uh, whose sum is actually 0 or whose sum is k we resort back to a very standard problem that we have solved multiple times. So the standard problem that I am talking about is a uh, sub array find sub array whose sum is k or in general whose sum is 0 right. So what we generally do in this particular problem we are falling back to the one dimensional problem or the one dimensional version of the today's problem. So what we generally do let us say we have some values a, b, c, d, e and let us say the prefix sums are p, q, r, s, t. So these are representing the prefix sums of the array and this is the actual array. Now if I say that q is equals to t that means c plus d plus e the value if I add these three values this is actually equals to 0. Why? I am saying that this particular value q is equals to this particular value t. This whole values p, q, r, s, t are the prefix sums. Now if the prefix sum has not changed over the course of values that means the values that are in between these places actually has the sum 0. Right. Similarly if t minus q is equals to k that means c plus d plus e is equals to k. So like whenever you want to form find the sum 0 this should be equal if you want to find the sum k that means the difference between these two prefix sums should be equal to k. So this is how we solve the one dimensional array problem in O of n. What we do we just traverse through the whole matrix keep on storing the prefix sums in a map or any data structure we want right. So we keep on storing this prefix sums in a map and if we want to make the sum equal to 0 we just check whether this particular prefix sum was encountered before or not right. So for example let us say let me just modify this prefix sum to be to look a little bit similar. So let us say this is p, q, r, s and q right. So whenever I traverse the matrix I will store p first of all p in my map then I will store q in my map and then I will store r in my map then I will store s in my map and when I come to this particular element I see that q is already present in the map that means that simply implies that this prefix sum q was also present somewhere before this particular point. That means there is a possibility that a sub array sum is equal to 0 and that will be this particular sub array in this range. Right. So now we will try to extend this particular intuition to our current problem. So let me just draw a double dimensional array now. And even before that let us let me just draw a column like this. So this is one single column right this represents this original array case right. Now again uh, there are multiple ways to implement this particular problem but I am going to show you a way which I use and for that to understand that particular intuition you need to first understand it with the help of a single column. So in this single column if I want to find the rectangular sub matrix the rectangular rectangular sub matrix whose sum is 0 I can apply the same logic I applied here because both of them are single dimensional arrays. So let us say there here prefix sum was p then q then r then s and then again q I will know that this rectangular sub matrix has some 0 because this prefix sum is equal to this prefix sum right. Now if I extend now if I extend this single dimensional column into a multi dimensional array like this. Now let us see what will happen. So let us say this is some column 1 and this is some column 2 right. Now I can try to 
let me just draw it to the different color so now if i go like this so i'm taking a line so now if i talk about this particular sub matrix right what is essentially happening is this is my current sub matrix right now instead of a single column i have multiple columns here right so let's say this whole column this whole row that means this row consisting of this particular column had a sum let's say p these three cells had a sum q and these three cells had a sum again p right that means the pre the sum of this particular sub array that is these six cells is actually zero is coming out to be zero right let me just explain you what i just said so initially i had one column now i just stretched this particular column on both sides so now it becomes multiple columns right now let's say these three cells have the sum p just similar to what i did here this particular cell had a sum p but since i have stretched it sideways now instead of a single column there are multiple columns and now these three cells have a sum p again these three cells have a sum q and these three cells have a sum p again now this means if this sum or if this prefix sum was encountered before as well that means the sum of this particular sub matrix is equals to zero right so if i have some way of finding out the sum of this particular each of these rows right so in this particular case each row each row is having a single column right each row is having a uh, i'm sorry in this particular case each row is having three columns right so here it was a single column here it it is three columns so in this particular case when there was only one column i was able to uh, like find the sum in o of 1 right i was able to find the sum of this single cell in o of 1 if i am able to derive some way in which i can find the uh, sum of these three columns in o of 1 o of 1 then my overall complexity would be o of m into m into n how is it like this because these two m's are used for fixing these two columns right let's say my columns is fixed now this particular n this particular n is used to traverse the number of rows so are you able to relate it to the first example that i took so why no let us see how how is it similar so in this particular case there was only one column right there was only one column so this factor was never there i never had to fix the starting and the ending columns the only thing that i had to do was traverse the matrix now this m into m factor is introduced because i want to fix column 1 and column 2 let's say once i have fixed this column 1 and column 2 o of n time will be required to traverse through the all the rows right now if i am able to find the sum of these three cells in o of 1 then i will be able to stop my complexity till here only otherwise let's say i am not able to find the sum in o of 1 what i can do is i can multiply a factor of o and of n again and then i can find the sum linear linearly right but i want to avoid this factor because i cannot afford my complexity to go beyond this that is why i will use prefix sum on the rows to find the sum of these three cells in like o of 1 right so this was the whole idea of the problem i tried to give you an analogy and what we do when we have a single dimensional array what difference did we make when we uh, like stretched the array into multiple dimensions the only thing that was introduced was this m into m factor and that is because we want to fix at least one of the dimensions that is the starting column and the ending column and then this o of n is exactly similar to what we did in this single column case right so let me just show you my code what i have done so i have a, a like i have stored the dimensions of the matrix n cross m first of all and then i have created a row prefix and i am taking it to be in one based indexing for proper understanding now i am going through all the rows and all the columns and row prefix of ij will be row prefix of ij minus 1 plus a of i minus 1 j minus 1 so this i minus 1 j minus 1 is only because this original a was in zero based indexing right now what i have to do is uh, if you are not able to understand this part let me ex explain this part again this is the same row and i am just referring to the previous column so for each row i am calculating the prefix sums right so what 
it will actually help me to do it will help me to find the sum of these three columns in O of 1 or multiple columns in O of 1. This is the purpose of this row prefix. Now I initialize my best with 0 and sx, xy, index xy, and y. These are just going to denote the coordinates of the starting point and the ending point. Now again using one based indexing, I am fixing the starting column i is equals to 1, i is less than m plus 1 and I am fixing the ending column as well, j is equals to i because the, st the ending column should start from at least this particular position, right. Now I am creating a map which will store the prefix sums, right. Now my prefix of 0 is 0, this is what we generally do when we uh, uh, do in a single dimensional array as well, why? Right? Because if we do not take any elements, the prefix sum will obviously be equal to 0. Right. Now my current sum is also initialized with 0. Now I am traversing through all the rows and adding the new sum to my uh, current sum. So what I am doing, row prefix of the kth row ending at the jth column minus row prefix of the kth row uh, like i minus 1. Why i minus 1 is here? Because my columns are starting from i and I have to subtract i minus 1th row, i minus 1th column from it so that the i minus 1th column is not included. So basically if I am starting from column 1, I have to remove all the things till this particular column like this, right. So you see, I, I have taken everything in one based indexing. So even if i is the zero is the first column, i minus 1 will still be accessible. This was the reason to take one based indexing everywhere. So let me just write it in the comments here. So this is, this loop is for the starting column, column. And the second loop is for the ending column, let us say ending column and this loop is for traversing through the rows, through, through the rows, right. Now what I do, if I have encountered this sum before, how can I check this? I can use pre dot count. So pre dot count will actually uh, tell me what are the number of occurrences of this current sum in my map. If this is greater than 0, then what I will do, I will find my current area. So my current area will be equal to j minus i plus 1. Why j minus i plus 1? Because both j and i index are included. Both of these columns are included. Multiplied by k minus pre of c sum. Why, why am I not adding 1 plus 1 here? Because k is included, but this pre of c sum is not included. So in pre of c sum, I am storing the first row in which this particular c sum appeared. Right. So I am storing the index of the first row where the sum appeared and that particular row is not included that is why I do not add one here. Now if area is greater than best then I update my best area and my starting x will be pre of c sum plus 1. The my starting row is this particular value plus 1 because this value this, this row was not included. My starting column was i, my ending row is k because I am at the current row k and my ending column was uh, j. Right. Now, if this is not found, I will update my pre of c sum is equal to k. So you see, I am updating this pre of c sum only when I am encountering this particular sum for the first time. So this way what will happen? I will store the first row where this c sum appeared, where this particular sum appeared. So oh, how this helps us? This will find me to, uh, this will help me to find the smallest row, right? And obviously I am starting my traversal for columns from 1, from the lower to the higher index. That is why I will also have the smallest column. This is what I said that uh, when I said that this particular thing will be taken care of when we implement this particular problem. You see, I am always taking the smaller column first and I am always storing the smaller row in my map, right? So this smaller row and smaller column conditions are always fixed and I only update my area if my new area is greater than the best area, right? At the end, what I can do, I can initialize my answer vector. If best is equal to zero, then I can just return my empty answer vector Otherwise, I am going to start my traversal from the starting row till my ending row and uh, I will initialize my current row vector. So what I will do, I will start from the starting column till the ending column and I will push back this particular element i minus 1, j minus 1 into my current row. So again, this is the a was in zero based indexing, that is why I have done this. Now I will emplace back this whole row into my answer vector. At the end, I can just return my answer double dimensional vector and this would be my final solution. So let me submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So we will just wait for it to complete. 
So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.